Uh, Danny, uh, Ma- Danny Mux. Mighty Ducks <laughs> got 12% on Rotten Tomatoes, and then D2 got like uh, 15 or 17, something like that, and then 3, three got 20. is at 20. So they, they improved, but uh, I don't understand why they hate for these movies. It's just kind of confusing. But then again, who cares about Rotten Tomatoes? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Dive Good into picks. that later. Good picks, yeah. But yeah. Relevant? Yes, very. Emma? Uh, so I have just one um, a show on Amazon called Tin Star. It's a British-Canadian TV show, uh, crime drama. It starts Tim Roth as an ex- undercover detective that gets promoted to a police chief in a small town in Canada. Um, The show is in its second season. Well, the second season was put up on Amazon, so I'm guessing they're working on the third season. Nice. Um, But the show starts, uh, Tim Roth and his family have to... his character have to move to this little town in Canada um, he got promoted to police chief and he's an alcoholic he's reckless but he's sober I guess he's been sober okay. so um, they go to the town they barely get there someone tries to kill him but kills his son instead oh, wow. so then the show the first season goes through him trying to like the family mourning and then him trying to figure out you know who what why all that and i i just started watching the second season and it's still really good tim roth is fucking really good yeah he's um just i don't know if you watched the show lie to me that he was in yeah he's kind of an asshole Mm -hmm. in the show well he's like kind of like that in this show too um, but um, the show is kind of weird pacing. It kind of reminds me of a Tarantino film. Mm-hmm. It has that kind of feel. Uh, it switches back and forth, like in the timeline. Okay, um, kind of jumpy. Yeah, it jumps. Um, but it's really fucking good. Like, and it's on Amazon. It's on Amazon. Okay. Yeah. You, just the first season alone is uh, Tim Roth is just like stand out. Because uh, uh, Christina Hendricks is in it, and oh. uh, Genevieve O'Reilly, which she was in the Rogue One Star Wars, to Star Wars movie. Yeah. Nice. That's it. That's it? Good pick. Tim Star, yeah. Nice. Um, so mine, uh, director David Cronenberg had a recent birthday, so I wanted to shout out him by wrecking A History of Violence. With Viggo Mortensen. Hmm. It's based on a popular graphic novel about uh, this dude who basically joins a witness protection program. His family has no idea. They go to an entirely different state than obviously yeah, where right. he's from. And um, he ends up making the papers after he saves his, like, he works in a cafe and he, uh, he stops a robbery and he makes the papers. And so his old, uh, his old people see that and yeah see that in the newspaper and they go looking for him really good fucking movie if you haven't seen it yet I'll have to check that out I, 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 I really wanted to see that when it came out it's but, really uh, good very good. Very, good. very brutal I have that graphic novel actually. oh really yeah look at you man <laughs> killing it I know you like you re- you wrecked the road oh yeah a while look, ago. I just watched it again the, uh, so if you like Vigo that's a you gotta buy that movie okay now. it's amazing uh, and then my second one is kind of random. It's October Sky, which is oh, uh, shit. <laughs> which is uh, uh, Jake Gyllenhaal's debut, I believe. Debut role. Is that the one where he they build the rocket? Yeah, the little rocket. Oh my god! That that he works good. at the at the um, coal mines. Mm-hmm. His dad, right? Yeah. They want him to be a coal miner, and he's like, "No, oh, I want to yeah. build rockets." <laughs> That's for fools. This is before Bubble Boy. <laughs> That's a good movie. I like Bubble Boy. I like Bubble Boy too. <laughs> Bubble Boy? No, yeah, that was before. Like way before. Yeah. yeah. He was God. a kid. That's a good movie. Yeah, it is. It is pretty random though. Well, it's good though. Yeah. <laughs> that's good. <laughs> so October Sky and uh, and that's and it. And now, yeah. drop the mic presents. 
shows and shows and more shows. So I have one show, November 17th, The Black Keys, which I bought us tickets for. Wow. Oh, so, surprise, surprise. Be nice. Yeah, be nice. <laughs> Shannon and the Clams, right? Shannon and the Clams and Modest Mouse? Is it? Is it? I don't know. <laughs> I think that's, I think it is. I don't listen to them, so. But Shannon and the Clams, definitely. I just want to say, I didn't fucking, I mean, I, there's not up and coming shows for me, but I went to go see LP the other day. Oh my god, we I were wanted outside. to go and see that. And, we drove uh, by there. Actually, that person behind you was the one <laughs> that bugged the shit out of me to go buy Aww. tickets, and we went to go see LP, which I've never seen live, or even, this is gonna sound fucking stupid, but I even heard her music, but after that day, I was just like, fucking hooked, and we've been listening to LP every fucking day, and it's amazing. She does one of the most amazing shows ever. Yeah. Really, really, really one of the best, one of the best, that I, I would... And I've seen numerous artists, and she really does a really good show. Except for the fact that there was like this, like a uh, girl with a man bun, and kept on going on my mouth. And I had to always, move. there's always that like, one from him, right? <laughs> had to move to the side, you know. You know, not getting all that full hair, felt like a cat. Oh, you, know? you didn't want to start a pit or nothing? You're I, like, I was about to. I was about to. I was like, yo, I was about to. I was about to be that guy. I was. This is how much heel I want. I wanted to be. I was gonna be the, like everybody quiet and just be like, yo, fuck LP. But uh, I know people would be like, fuck you, blah, blah, blah. I think you get beat up. up. And then, or like, LP, come here, come here, come up here. <laughs> I knew it. I knew it was going to get me attention. But uh, but no, she does a really good show. And uh, I want to point that, do that out because it's fucking amazing. There's rarely, rarely artists that I go see for the first time and I'm just hooked. Mm-hmm. She's one of and she just played Viva Latino, so. Mm. So it was her first time. It was her first time in Mexico, right? Yeah, first time in Mexico. So, fucking amazing. There you go. Boom. Anything else? I'm gonna. Oh, Artes Pelados and Amigos Invisibles coming next month. I know you guys are not a big uh, Spanish rock thing, but um, those are two fucking great. Uh, uh, Musicians, uh, one from Venezuela, Amigos Invisibles, which they do in Latin. If you like Latin jazz, Latin funk, that's your fucking shit. Uh, Colombian rock, which is Artes Pelados with um, Andrea Cheverri, who's like the biggest influence in um, women. Which she's, she's fought for women's rights in the industry down in Latin America for numerous years. And is an avid uh, activist for... Uh, human rights in Latin America as well. So go check those out. Uh, I think they're, they're playing the 25th, April 25th at the Observatory. So those are show, show, shows, shows. Yeah. <laughs> what about uh, Sector Core? Oh, yeah, Sector Core. And uh, next weekend on Sunday with our friends from Mad Cow Disease who are playing. Oh, yeah. Who are playing on. Um, those guys are cool. There's a, what's it, 25th anniversary? 25th anniversary? Yeah, 25th anniversary. Yeah. Crazy. With Sectacore, I mean, we've known since uh, fucking, what, 2000s? And uh, our friends from Matt Caldus, he's from high school and stuff. Big shout outs to the George and Bernie, and um, who are still original members going on there, and their new, their new, uh, their new members and stuff there. Yeah. But uh, we actually might, we actually are gonna shoot that uh, show actually. Okay. Yeah, we're gonna do. I know we're gonna do some filming. I'm not sure if we're gonna film Sector Core, but we're definitely gonna film uh, Mad Cow Disease and uh, do some photography as well for them. Nice. But uh, you know, we're trying to recollect as much stuff as we can so we could put a documentary together for them. Uh, hopefully, drop by the end of the year. So. Cool. So we're trying to, you know, make this comeback a little bit more special for him, for them, I mean, and uh, let's see where it goes. Cool. For sure. And with that, we'll move into our movie focus. Oh, yeah. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Five, four, three, two, one. And now for the movie focus of the week. All right, guys. So we're talking about uh, D23. 
D3. For, for those of you that are still here after this <laughs> hour and a half uh, hour and of hour news. Segments. No, it's, no it's, it's good stuff. Uh, D3, The Mighty Ducks. Oh, yeah. It's rated PG. It's from 1996. It's considered a comedy, a sports drama. It runs one hour and 44 minutes and it's got a 20 on Rotten. For the synopsis, I wrote, After the Ducks score scholarships to a prep school and lose Bombay as a coach, a rival begins between the varsity team. Will our underdogs be able to overcome the odds once again? Good setup. <laughs> Starring Emilio Estevez, Joshua Jackson, Vincent LaRusso, Sean Wise, Eldon Henson, Mike Vitar, Marguerite Maru, Matt Doherty, Jeffrey Nordling, and Joshua... Aikland, Heidi Kling, and Keenan Keen, Thompson, Keen Thompson, and Michael Cudlitz yeah. of Walking Dead. Yeah, <laughs> super young. <laughs> Directed by Robert Lerman, who you you might recognize his work in Fire in the Sky, The Expanse, The X Files, and much more. Wow. So, Diego, I have to ask you, <laughs> why did you pick this film? So I picked D3 because uh, obviously um, it was uh, kind of a personal thing. Uh, It's actually the first uh, movie me and my mom actually watched together. Okay. Uh, Previously to that, we weren't like watching anything, but she we sat down and literally watched this movie. And uh, obviously, I'm a huge Mighty Ducks fan, Um, and uh, D3 holds a special place in my heart because of it. Um, so yeah, that's why I picked it. And also, um, I think we need to start, um, doing something backwards and reviewing the last film to first. Okay. That's how I feel. So we could see the digression of, uh, of how, like, and not digression, but like the progression of how films were, um, you know, done from the first, uh, from last to first. Okay. So that's me. I mean, but. That's uh that's one of the reasons I picked the mighty the D three the Mighty Ducks, so which actually it's her one to month anniversary today, ironically is on a Tuesday too, <laughs> so so you know once again for your mom yeah yeah, yeah. so that's why I picked D three the Mighty Ducks and it's also I feel it's one of the best ones I might get a uh, debate from other people <laughs> <laughs> I've already got a debate from several people on fucking Instagram about um, D2 okay but uh, you know I'm a D3 a D3 all day <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. that's a good opener yeah. so what what are everyone's thoughts on the film watching it again after all these years. I definitely didn't remember this one. I Omo. didn't remember. I don't even know if I did watch it before watching it recently. <laughs> I just don't remember it. I always remembered... Uh, it's been that long since I've seen it. I don't know where I got the idea of... I thought this one, they were in college, but they're in high school. I know yeah. you mentioned that. Yeah. Um, I think maybe that's because I had asked my grandma when, I, when she got me this movie what a scholarship was. Because I had no idea and I was a kid, and I think she mentioned something about uh, you get a scholarship when you go to college. Usually, yeah, that is how it and, works. And then I think the the, 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 the like setting, the setting that they're yeah. into, kind of made me think of a college, like the dorm the, room. Scene yeah, and like, you like know, that. the prep school. I've never been to one, so I wouldn't know what they look they look like. But uh, yeah. it's uh, it was definitely entertaining. I haven't seen it in a while. It was definitely entertaining. There's a lot of I stuff I that. don't remember seeing this and, and then laughing. I'm like, oh man, that was a good one. <laughs> you know, I just it's a, it's a good time. It brings up uh, good memories from when I was a kid. Mm-hmm. I know you had the you brought the VHS. On I you? know yeah. you, you, you went VHS. Did you have the um, coming attractions fucking uh, thing come up on you and shit like oh, oh um, previews? Yeah, he didn't watch it. I don't think. No, I don't think I, I didn't watch it on that. I don't have a, oh. a VC, uh, VCR anymore. But uh, I still have a whole bunch of. Because uh, he was VHS. like, "Where can I watch it at?" And then he posts that, and I was like, "You have the fucking movie right there." <laughs> like it's a VHS, bro. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah. So I'm a fan of that movie. Yeah, bringing out the old collection. There. I think probably the last time I watched it was on VHS. Besides uh, yesterday, last night. How did you feel watching this? Um, I'd give it a six. 
Nice. Oh,